So we've had loads of videos coming out about David Moyes, there's still loads more to come, but this video is slightly different. I am joined by freelance journalist, Man United fan, and poet, Musa Akwongo. Musa, how are you doing? Very well, thanks. All Quality. Uh, we're gonna be a little bit more laid back here and talk about David Moyes and his dismissal from Manchester United. Uh, Musa, how did this come about over the last 24 hours? Well, the last day, it's really accelerated. Uh, the statement came out at uh, 2 p.m., the statement came out across all media channels that yeah. Moyes was going to be sacked and suspiciously well synchronised. So the Telegraph was talking about the Times, Guardian as well. And thereafter, really, Moyes' position was untenable. And how, did, saw, how did all these people know? Should that, I mean, how did that information come out of the club? Well, here's the thing. Like, a press officer would have given a piece of news, embargoed for 2 p.m. and said, look, this is going to happen. You can't, re you can't release it until now, yeah. which is why it all came out at the same time. And at that point, you know, hell broke loose on social media. So. Was, was the embargo till 2 p.m. or did the press break the embargo? They wouldn't have broken it. I mean, no. if you look across all channels, yeah. it was pretty much simultaneous. So once one of them went, they all went. The Mail, The Guardian, all sort of, you know, pretty much in concert. So you're, the club de are definitely, they leaked? That they I, 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 would put, I would put a large sum yeah. of money on the fact the club had leaked that. Not very classy, I would say. No, I agree with you there. Yeah. But then again, the Glazer debt is not classy, so this is no, not necessarily uh, the greatest surprise. So when do you think this decision was made that it was time for David Moyes to go? Well, Ian Herbert, the Independent, was saying that it would be made as long ago as February, but they couldn't mm -hmm. sack him because of the provision Moyes' contract, which states that if you qualify for Champions League, you have to pay out a greater sum than the one-year payout, which is four and a half million. So there's a sense yeah. that as soon as United failed to qualify for Champions League, they could activate that clause. So even back in February, they were thinking it's time right. for a change. So did, would he have known that? I don't know if he'd have known. Uh, the funny thing is so much came out of the club that it would have been hard not to have a suspicion. Having said that, apparently the first he heard was when he was sacked this morning. So he, he must have known the knives were, the knives were out. Yeah, because I mean, we've heard him recently saying about, you know, we've got players lined up. Would, would the club have been working with him alongside that, always thinking you're not going to be here next year? Well, you know how it is at the big continental clubs, you've got the director of football, and so yeah. there is always transfer business going on. Mm -hmm. it's, not that, it's not that atypical to have a manager being consulted, even though he might be sacked in a couple of months. So I'm pretty sure yeah. that he was part of that process as well. Okay, cool. Uh, so as a United fan, what are your thoughts about this? What are your concerns? If I'm honest, yeah. my first feeling was it was relief because he looked overwhelmed by the job. Yeah. I think he might after the initial pain of, of the sacking, feel some relief as well, because the job, it seemed, it seemed too big for him. The concerns now, I suppose, are the club's medium to long-term future. I'm not naive yeah. about this. United have been bad before. We've seen it in the 80s. It'll take some while to recover. I just hope that they make an appointment that's really good in the medium term. So not expect trophies in the next couple of years, but just yeah. steady the ship. Yeah, someone to hang around, make sure we're qualifying for the Champions League. Yeah, just get back in the top four. Be, you know, yeah. be conservative in the aims. Like, get an ambitious manager who's got a track record behind them, mm -hmm. hopefully whose best years are ahead of them. Yeah. So that may not be Van Hal, who's been much touted. I'd recommend him as well myself. Yeah. But hopefully <laughs> just bed down and get someone in place who will set up structures for the club's medium to long-term future. Okay. Uh, so should we talk about the Glazers and right. their role in all of this? Because this is the first time, really, we've seen, from a fan's perspective, any action from them. They've been right. so silent. Um, what do you think about their role in any of this? The Glazers basically have had the ring of power for the last, you know, sort of... Lord of the Rings? Years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Lord of the Rings reference. Sorry, I always throw Sauron. one. Sauron? Always throw one. Yeah, they've had a sort of... Gandalf? They've kind of, they've held the ring of power for the last nine, ten years because they've had one of the greatest managers, not the greatest manager of all time. Yeah. And now that Ferguson's gone, the sticking plaster... Is this a Moyes Gollum joke? No, it's not. I'm not, I'm not extending this metaphor. Um, <laughs> um, I just feel like the sticking plaster has come off. And the Glazers now have to make a very tough decision about the right manager. And I yeah. think that, I think, to be honest... Ferguson spoiled all of us, but particularly the Glazers, because they could carry on asset stripping the club yeah. while he was being successful. Now that he's gone, I think they are entering a period of uncertainty and a bit of fear as well, I think, a bit of fear. So do you think, with the way they've acted, is there genuine danger that United, despite our history, will become a second club if success doesn't come? There's a very real danger, I think, of United becoming the Inter Milan of the Premier League. And when I say that, I mean successive managers coming and going, uh, difficult to really impose themselves in Europe at the very highest level. Look at Inter Milan, where they had uh, yeah. Maratti being the owner, but Maratti was a meddler um, who loves football, and so his ego got in the way. Mm -hmm. The Glazers, the problem there is they're not football people, but the ultimate result may be similar, that yeah. they don't necessarily make football decisions, and that's my fear over the next sort of 10 years for United at least. So back to David Moyes, why do you think he wasn't the right man for the job, despite all his results? <laughs> 
I think that Moyes really had just felt very comfortable at clubs of a certain size. I think yeah. Moyes loved being the plucky underdog, is what he was used to. So whenever he spoke about United, he talked in terms of being the underdog, you know, yeah. I think, Which, you know... I mean, we're only Man United, but we'll try really hard. We'll try really hard, you know, yeah. we hope to succeed, we hope to yeah. do well. That's we'll, why tr we'll try to stop Newcastle's day, we'll do our best to stop by mighty Munich Newcastle. Suit. It's why Bayern Munich suited him so well, like yeah, being, you know, ideal, the adversary, counter-punching. Even the, the greatest victories he had in Europe against teams like Leverkusen, he yeah. was counter-punching, wasn't really imposing. And that was great, those results are fantastic, but as a United manager, you've got to be a front runner, you've got to push yeah. from the front, and when Sa it came to that, he couldn't do it. Saying Liverpool were favourites coming to Old Trafford was disgusting. Well, it's why he had a fantastic away record, you know, yeah. because actually that suits him, being reactive. The result against Hull was fantastic, for example. You know, Hull at that point, when we beat them 3-2, had at that point one of the best defences in Europe. Yeah. But when you come to Old Trafford and you've got to set the tone from the off, he couldn't do that. Yeah. And I hate to contrast it with Liverpool, but Liverpool have the highest number of goals scored in the first half of the Premier League because Liverpool get on the front foot very early. So do you think it's just, it just purely out of his depth? Unfortunately, in so many aspects, I just think he was. From the press statements, you know, getting, getting Ferdinand to watch videos of Jagielka. Yeah, that's mad. And, and turning down Thiago Alcantara and then signing Fellaini. I mean, <laughs> Thiago Alcantara is probably the most talented young footballer, young midfielder in Europe even more so than Yara Mendy at Madrid. Like, he's an unbelievable player. And to have turned him down when the deal was arguably all but done and then signed Fellaini, I mean, that is just, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking. But Fellaini has an afro, which he is does. nice. Well, so does my cousin, Some, he's not signed for United. <laughs> somewhere right? Fellaini's sat at home crying, feeling like, like, you know, like the child worrying that whose parents are getting divorced, saying it's all their fault. Well, That's Fellaini right now. Well, Fellaini, actually, the scary thing is he should be even more, even more scared than Moyes, because where does he go now? Yeah. Like, really, like, there's not really a place for him in a fast-passing midfield. He doesn't press Good the ball. Midfield. Well, where's he going to go? What's his resale value going to be? This is a, it's a worrying time Hopefully for him. Hopefully he'll have a great World Cup and someone will buy him for more than three million. Or maybe end up at Stoke. <laughs> Wherever Moyes goes, Fellaini goes. Yes, he'll be, he'll yes. be fine. He'll, he'll be, be absolutely fine. fine. Yeah. Um, so do you think that uh, Moyes should have had more time, given that he was on a six-year deal? Or do you think this is a case of not United saying, oh, we're just going to sack people, we don't get results that, you know, pencils have rubbers for a reason, and this was a mistake from the outset, it, it shouldn't have happened. I think it was a mistake. I mean, I, I said it, I supported it at the time, I hate to say it, I, I supported it at the time, and I've written articles, anyone can quote yeah. those at me, and that's fine, I don't mind, because I wanted to believe in him and that he'd be successful, but as time went on, it, it quickly became apparent it wasn't, it wasn't right for him, not at all, not at all. Do you think, it's, and this is a deeper level than just football, in terms of everything, this club was just too big for David Moyes? Absolutely, it was too big yeah. for him. I mean, everything, even the way he talked about it. He spoke about the club in a way that it seemed he never really belonged. And the worst thing about it was the constant re reference to, to Ferguson. It, when yeah. Bob Paisley came to Liverpool, Bob Paisley basically said that Shankly couldn't come to the training ground anymore. And he was like, he shunned him. It was harsh, but it was what he did. Yeah. I know that Ferguson's a director, but I'm always constantly saying, oh, Sir Alex has been very helpful. No, like, yeah, you've got take to be the your controls yourself. But take off the L plates. It seems yeah. inconceivable to me, that anybody thinks it could be possible to say, we've just had the most successful manager in British football history, possibly the greatest manager of all time, let's just put in Mark II and it'll be exactly the same. Surely you want something completely different to blow the cobwebs out of the training ground and, and, and that's how you move on, isn't it? I, I think that's, in hindsight it is, but let's not forget that a lot of us were afraid, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm 34 years old, so I'd seen United in the 80s, and seen what we were like, and those, those were pretty scary, you know, they weren't in the ground scheme scary, but yeah. 11th, 13th in the league, a club that's expecting more. People were afraid of plummeting, which ironically has happened. So they wanted the conservative option. So it made yeah. sense to put Moyes there as a kind of like, oh, well, he looks similar to the old guy. But you're right, like a bold appointment actually would have been a better choice. Someone like Rudy Garcia, who's now at Roma, yeah. would have been very bold. Or, you know, you look at someone like Spalletti, you know, who's always played fantastic attacking football. Something a bit more left field might have worked. We bottled it. <laughs> we bottled it, so, absolutely. Uh, uh, moving on then from David Moyes, who do you think should take the hot seat now and should um, Everton fans be worried that we'll now be after Roberto Martinez? <laughs> I think Everton fans are fine because if Martinez, is, if Martinez is smart he'll stay there for the next couple of years at least and watch his stock rally rise because I think that Martinez in two years is going to be one of the biggest jobs in world football. Yeah. In the meantime the scary thing for United I think is that we don't really have the best options available. Mourinho a great manager but it's his temperament, you know, is his style the wrong one for United? Will he create chaos when he arrives? If he arrives, that's a scary one. Van Gaal is a great option because he can lay foundations, but he has 
a destructive personality. I almost feel like we should give Van Hal, you know, a couple of years to put structures in place. Yeah and then maybe look after that. Do you think there's any issue with someone like Van Hal coming in who spent the last three years on the international scene out of club football? I don't think so because Van Hal to me is a guy like Hiddink. You know, Hiddink yeah. actually is a guy who might be ideal, but he's, he's otherwise engaged, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But someone that comes in, that feels no problem you know, with big clubs, that has you know, equated to the Champions League, knows how it works, isn't afraid to drop big players. You know, yeah. My fear, actually, one of my biggest fears with the, the club business at the moment is giving Rooney that massive contract, which makes him the first choice striker, Welbeck upset because he won't start. Van Hal, as the kind of manager, can come in and say, actually, I'm going to start you know. Yeah, whomever. Right, exactly. In the same way that Van Hal, when Van Hal came in at Ajax, I think it was him that dumped uh, Stanley Menzo for Van de Sar in goal. Because St Stanley Menzo was a fan favourite, but Van de Sar was a better footballer, and he became, you know, the lead Edwin keeper. Edwin Van de Sar. Absolutely, our, 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 our much beloved. So, yeah. you know, Van Hal can do that. And yeah. even though he might be disruptive in the short term, he might be the guy with the guts to take the club forward. Yeah, bit of ball. Is there any much, because Jurgen Klopp obviously seems to be a fan favourite, um, but he's already distanced Klopp, himself. Klopp is off the table. I mean, Klopp signed the extension in October. He said he's out. You know, his hat is not on the ring till 2018. But do you, do you, I think it's, do you not think it's one thing saying that to the press, you come and ask you a question and you've no idea if it's really an option and a different thing to someone putting on a plate in front of you and saying, this is Manchester United, we'll pay you this, you can do this, you can sign whoever you want. Do you think it's as easy to say no if they really, really go for him? I think we should really, really try, but in the same way that Milan tried to sign Xavi, yeah. in the same way that like, you know, Inter came after Giggs, and I'm sure that countless clubs came after Scholes, and he was yeah. like, nada. I think we've got to try with Klopp, and it might be embarrassing, we've got to ask. And I think yeah. we've asked, and I think we've been, we've been pushed back. Uh, Simeone, another talk of him, but I think Simeone, as James Horncastle was saying, is another player who's so closely bound, another manager who's so closely bound to the club, he might not want to come. Yeah. Anyone else in the frame? There are a handful. So I'm thinking, let, let's. What we've people said, are talking about people like Frank de Boer. We've said Van Hal, we've said Van, uh, Frank de Boer at Ajax, who'd be amazing, maybe slightly yeah. too early for him, maybe come back in a couple of years. Um, Do you think I, think, I think Rudy Garcia at Roma is worth at least asking because what he did at Lille was fantastic and what yeah. he's done at Roma this year is amazing. I think he's stuck there for the bit, but I would go after him. With Mourinho into him, people think it's. Is it even possible? given that he is manager of Chelsea. Is it realistic that even if, if the club approached, is that, is that possible? It is realistic, and I'll tell you why it's realistic. I was um, at, a, at an awards dinner a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and it was pretty clear at that time that Mourinho was the front runner for the job. Yeah. And Mourinho actually came to speak, it was a, it was a charity awards dinner, and it was, a, it was a dinner where Ferguson normally comes and speaks. But that year, Mourinho was there giving the speech, and it was part of the quid pro quo, as in, you're my kind of successor, mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things you'll do on the way up to the mountaintop. And at that point, you know, he was established as the front runner. As we all know, he fell out with Tata Martino, um, I think it was, a, not Martino, it was the previous um, Barcelona boss. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made the United hierarchy go sour on him. But it's a job that he still wants and has always wanted. Yeah. So it's actually very possible that he could be the United manager. And if he does turn up, I think he'd be fantastic. All right. Time will tell, I suppose. Who's your money on? Money is on Van Gaal, but Mourinho has got to be on the outside track. A little bit boring, you just went with a favourite. <laughs> Never mind. We're uh, united, it's about being a favourite. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Moussa. Guys, let us thank know you. what you think. Please write it down below. Tell us who you want as manager and um, what you thought of David Moyes. That'd be nice. And subscribe to Full Time Devils. It'll make your dreams come true. It won't. <laughs>